Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Carrie Cassidy from Project Camelot, and very happy to be here today. I have Maria Akachella with me. She's uh, thrilled to be doing the Divine Mother Earth Time with Laura Eisenhower. So she's a co-host with Laura Eisenhower, and uh, they both interviewed me I think a week or two ago. And uh, so, hi, Marissa, and it's great to have you here. Hi, Carrie. I am so thrilled and honored to be here with you because I followed your career and I've watched <laughs> so many of your videos and I've learned so much from you and you've enlightened me and inspired me for so many, many years, more, even, more years than I care to admit. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, now I have read your, um, the, the big shebang mm -hmm. one and um, graphic novel, and it's, it's absolutely fabulous. The, uh, especially the drawings, paintings, whatever you call them. So um graphics are amazing. Uh, and I wanted to really kind of start off with what got you on this path? How did you start becoming a graphic artist, which you're, you seem like a natural talent, and obviously, you've, you've gone very far with it. So can you tell us about that? Sure. Well, first of all, um, I'm going to start way back when, um, basically, uh, my mother was a shoe designer. When she was pregnant with me, she got a phone call uh, at her office um, from Jackie Kennedy, who was looking for someone, someone to design her shoes for her. Jackie was a size 11. And my mother was a size 11 and said, well, we could commiserate. And my mother actually designed Jackie's shoes for JFK's inauguration. Wow. So, yeah, which was really interesting. Jai, who was pregnant with John John, my mom was pregnant with me. So, you know, when I was, you know, my mother was freelancing after giving birth and she would draw shoes. And to imitate her, I would draw and I would also draw shoes. And then she would do these trend reports with these great looking women wearing her fabulous shoes and because her shoes were very fashionable, she designed for Delman, the Bergdorf Goodman line. And that's basically how I started drawing. I would draw these really great looking, fabulous women wearing fabulous shoes. And then by around eight years old, I got really bored with them. And I just thought, you know, they're not really interesting to me anymore. They look good, but they're really not saying anything. So... My family, instead, I'm from New Jersey, and although now I moved to Florida, but um, we went to, we had a vacation in Bermuda. It was our first big vacation that was in the Jersey Shore. And we stayed in this pink elephant of a house that had these drawings on them, drawings on the walls with oh. captions. And I was totally intrigued. And I thought, oh, wow, the women that I'm drawing could talk. And it turns out, it was James Thurber's house, the iconic uh, New Yorker cartoonist. So then I started really getting into cartooning and I read everything that I could about James Thurber. So that's basically how I started on that cartoon graphic novel trajectory and then went to art school and went to advertising. And then um, I totally forgot what I was meant to do with my life. And then uh, I had turned 29, my Saturn return, you know, all about that, right? When you sort of have like a meltdown about your career. And I was, I had my sketch pad in my bed and it was New Year's Eve and I just turned 29 and I asked every single spirit I could think of calling on God, Jesus, Mary, all the saints in heaven. And, um, and I lit a candle for them too. And asked him to help me figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And I wrote, she was a little upset during the meeting with, with the blonde woman that I've always drawn since I could. She was a little upset during the meeting. And then I realized, oh my God, I should have been a cartoonist all along, leaned into my candle 
and my hair caught on fire. So not only did I get a new career, but I got a new haircut. I got a shag after that. <laughs> so that's wow. Um, <laughs> okay, that's pretty shocking. Uh, all right. So so you were you were an artist, mm -hmm. and you'd been to art school at that point. Yeah, I went to Pratt and. Yeah, I studied art, but I never, but, but I taught cartooning myself. I always, something that I always did. And from advertising, I learned how to draw storyboards because, sure. mm -hmm. you know, I was an art director, so I would draw storyboards. So I think in succession, and that's really good training for doing graphic novels because right. you think filmically, right? So yeah. you're, you're drawing 30 second commercials which is what i was doing art directing them and coming up with the idea so that was a natural transition to become a graphic novelist okay so did people tell you that you had like a flair uh you know a natural talent in the area of drawing and and such oh yeah i definitely had that growing up and okay yeah and i always drew those women and then when i was doing this comic strip she that uh, ran in Mirabella magazine. Um, I had this idea for the big shebang, but I didn't quite know what to do with it until like I wrote that book for like five years ago. But I had that title for like 25 years. Okay. Uh, now the one, the graphic novel that you won, uh, I guess a prize on, which I'm trying to find over here. Well, it was Time Magazine said it was one of the 10 best graphic novels ever written and <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> impressive yeah and and readers digest said it was it's number seven in the 50 best graphic novels ever written that was two months ago so and Recently. now it's okay yeah and i wrote this book in 2006 okay and yeah it's actually been optioned for a tv series so oh wow okay so uh that's incredible. So in terms of you, you've started being a podcaster with uh, Laura Eisenhower, mm -hmm. and I think you're quite good at it. Uh, so how did you fall into that? Well, this is really funny. So um, after I wrote, after the big shebang came out and um, Laura, I saw that Laura was doing readings. So I signed up to do a reading with her and we totally connected. And uh, she interviewed me and then we stayed in touch and we always did, we always co-hosted guests. So then we just started doing this podcast because uh -huh. we really like hanging out and we have very similar views and we like interviewing the same people. We loved interviewing you, by the way. <laughs> that was a great show. We've got to have you back on. Oh, well, thank you that. <laughs> It was fun. You guys asked really good questions and, you know, it was very uh, dynamic, I think. Uh, but OK, so so here you are now. What is um, you know, you're, you're kind of in in sort of almost two careers now simultaneously, right? Yeah. I mean, I swear to God, I feel like I'm like my career bifurcated, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm I'm curious that though where is your head at in terms of so, since you're so good at graphic novels are you writing a new one now or do you have plans for a new one and is the writing of it something that you comes easily and so do you write the story before you design it or do you or vice versa how does that work That's a good question well um it's funny because uh, so I drew to the title, the big shebang. Actually, I had the title, so I drew to the title. Um, and then I, uh, sometimes I get images and sometimes I get headlines. So it's kind of both, I guess. Um, so now, I, I um, actually, I could run downstairs and get your book because you gave me a copy or if you okay. have it to show. OK, great. So yeah. maybe you can show some I, or if you have on your computer, you know how to share pictures and stuff or whichever way, because holding it might be a little bit 
hard for the viewers to see the pictures to their do justice to, do you, or do you have a website for example with your pictures on it um i do have a website that i could okay that I so could. the one here that says marissa acachella acachella um suspicious link <laughs> oh no did it not okay yeah well that's what it's saying i it doesn't matter i i'll still go there um, so maybe that's the way to go. Is that a good place to see your picture? You know, some just so people can get a general idea about what you do. So I'm putting this on the screen right now. This okay. is your website. If yeah. you have uh, actual, you know, because you're on your computer, I don't know, maybe this is a little unexpected and you weren't planning to share pictures. But if you do, you know, if it's easy to find the pictures, then let me know. And because I'm just going to scroll through. I guess this website and click around and see what we've got here. Okay. So, um, I don't oh, know. you know what? That might actually be kind of good. I did a thing: the fresh right. oil hats for conspiracy theorists, fashionistas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that I actually did. Believe it or not, look at the date, Carrie. Twenty oh, twenty eighteen, October twelfth, twenty eighteen. Right. Right. So that's like nice. way ahead of way ahead of our time, right? Yeah, great. Awesome. Well, yeah. I don't know. It's not ahead of our time. This is our time. <laughs> no, but I mean, so you know how people were talking about tinfoil hats and like there was like all these Instagram images like last year about like fabulous tinfoil hats. Well, I did did this in 2018. Right. Wonderful. And yeah. it is wonderful. I mean, people can definitely get an idea of what you do there. Um, mm -hmm. So that's great. And this is uh, a New Yorker spread New York. that you yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. Story okay. From um, I'm just going to click over here and see if we've got some other stuff. Yeah. I don't, I should have like gotten some. Yeah. You should have thought of that. I, I mean, it seems like a no brainer with all your stuff, but I know how it is, you know, you kind of take it for granted and then all of a sudden somebody wants to see it and then where is it? <laughs> I know. I know. But so that, I, okay. Yeah. Well, we, I think they can see at least a little bit here and, um, and, and go from there. So, okay. I'll just stop sharing and, and just go back to here. So, all right. So people can get an idea what you do. I mean, now I, I was actually thinking of hiring you um, sometime in the future. I don't, I don't have the project right on my, but I always love graphic novels, mm -hmm. especially um, manga or however you say it. Mangas. Oh yeah. I so um, there are, I'm, those are a big favorite of mine. And uh, so I just thought uh, there might be a sort of a Camelot story or, or something that I might want to put together at some point. Uh, now, I'm did so you fired. ever like, cause there's things you can do. You, like you say, you could do a storyboard. So you could be hired by a, a studio or a production mm -hmm. company to storyboard a movie, right? Well, I actually did storyboard something that Meg Ryan was doing a few years ago. Oh, yeah, that was, yeah. That was fun. So too. as I'm saying, that's obviously, you know, something that you could do and get paid for, whatever. <laughs> I mean, I don't know your situation, but, you know, uh, so I think that's probably a, a really great avenue as well for someone like you. But is there anything, any big project that you're thinking of in the future? I mean, you could literally, having the skills you have, you can draw it so you don't, a person doesn't have to imagine it in their own mind. They could actually see the graphics very well. Like you can even imagine, what if you were doing a graphic novel as Star Wars, then you already have the skills to do, you know, all the bizarre characters and everything. Mm -hmm. I was thinking you should do an alien book. I know it, it sounds a little weird, but there is a. No, I was think I kind of want to do an alien book. Well, there's a famous book out. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's called the Little Alien Book. And recently, I tried to find it. I think they might have taken it off the web, but it actually, you know, had a page like a description of the being, and then it had a picture of the being, and there was tons of them. And it was this little book, and it was on uh, Veterans Today. 
And um, yeah, and I had had it on my website, but recently I went looking for it and I found that I couldn't find it and the link doesn't work anymore. So they've taken it off their website, I guess. But if anyone watching this uh, stumbles on it, can find it, um, please do send me the link and and maybe send Marissa uh, the link and we can give you her email address as well. But anyway, so it just occurred to me because I was looking for that book that at the same time I was reading your book and stuff like that. And so then I thought, wow, you would be the perfect person to actually do this book, you know, like do a book like that. I mean, I would actually love to do like aliens, something that I'm, of course, really, really interested in. I would love to do <laughs> of, a, of a female alien. I think that would be so cool. Yeah, actually. But there's lots of, you know, there's lots of different kinds, as, as you may know, and, uh, and everyone's curious of what they look like. And mm -hmm. with your skills, you're, you're going to be able to do, uh, do them justice, so to speak, I would say. And you could also, you know, get some in, inspiration, perhaps from people that have had you know, experiences with aliens. So you could do a whole book. I'm not telling you what to do here, but you could actually have them write to you, tell them your their experience with the alien, describe the alien, and then you could draw it, you know, and you would have a whole book like that. That would be way it might be really fun. I mean, I think there's aspects to, and we can get more serious here, but I, I think, you know, we were talking beforehand, uh, what what is the stage we're at and mm -hmm. one of the stages i'm at because in some ways i have as a precog i have seen things that are happening and they are happening so mm -hmm. what do you how do you, what do you do when you are faced with seeing things in front of your eyes that you've already seen um years ago kind of thing and then the next step is imagining the future, like imagining a better future from this point on. And mm -hmm. so I think that, you know, somebody like you, a graphic artist can visual help people visualize mm -hmm. um, a better future. And for example, mm -hmm. um, nice Wendy. Wendy oh, sorry oh, about this. Um, I don't know how I have, I have to turn that off, I guess. Okay. So um, I was thinking that, that, you know, Antarctica, well, Antarctica is said to be the last time that humans and aliens walked together on the surface of Earth. Mm -hmm. And it, a lot of it is buried under the ice in Antarctica. And that's why all, every, all these scientists are going down there. So mm -hmm. you could actually, you know, create that story and, and, and show you could also visualize Atlantis and there are descriptions of the scientists that are going down there right now are describing some of the amazing things. And there's, I know a certain author who mm -hmm. wrote books like whole stories, books, you know, novels um, that apparently are basically the truth, but he had to say they were fiction. Okay. About what has been found down in Atlantis. So it's amazing stuff. <laughs> well, you saying. know, it's kind of wild, honestly. You, uh, <laughs> I swear we're on the same wavelength. Are you in my head? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> because I am actually writing something about Atlantis, so. Oh, really? Cool. So I'm yeah, yeah. into that. That's like yeah, typical. I, I do that. Sometimes. Very typical. Yeah, because I was writing about Atlantis and like also the timeline, you know, because, okay. I, you know how, okay, this is like what so upsets me about right now, which is <laughs> that, you know, we're given these narratives because we are, we are, are the great manifestors, basically. We're the uh, great creators. So they put something in our head and then we create it for them, right? You know, mm -hmm. the psychopaths who think they're in charge, not the real God, but right. So sure. they, so why can't we take control of the narrative? Why can't we right. put ideas in our heads that we can change the world for the better and create the better timeline? Well, when so you want to, create the future future one of the good things to do is is to imagine it is to visualize it and since you're a great visualizer and then executing your your vision 
to paper. You know, it's, it's, it's just a lot like George Lucas and what he was doing. So, you know, I, his team, I mean, obviously I don't think he's, he's necessarily a great artist, but you know, he had a, an amazing grasp of, of, of a world he wanted to depict. Like I always remember the bar scene in, 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 in Star Wars. So, you know, this is the example, but people think that it's a joke or something, but it's actually not that far from the truth. And um, I remember that when Men in Black came out, mm-hmm. the same thing, people, it, you know, because I'm always dealing with whistleblowers and stuff like that. So they were saying that that's actually in the in the milieu out there that men in black is not that far from the truth either. Right. And, right. and so and then there's another television series. The British one is, I think, best. It's uh, called Torchwood. And that was also we were told based on the truth. Mm-hmm. So, in other words, they're going around or they were going around. I don't know what they're doing now, but this is a many years ago and a very um a police constable in britain who was quite famous whose name escapes me at the exact moment had written had written to us and told us that actually torchwood was real they are you know that there's a whole you would never think of this that you would never think that there is kind of like a spy story and a story where they're tracking down leads to unearth aliens who have emerged in our in our sector here in on earth and they do do that <laughs> they actually you know sometimes accidentally even they could come here but they don't expect to manifest necessarily but sometimes they do accidentally <laughs> Mm-hmm. or whatever, or someone can see them. Sometimes you have etheric, what's called etheric sight, and you can see them or you become conscious of them or whatever it is. So it's just, uh, I'm just saying how that, this world that at least mm-hmm. I investigate and people are becoming, you know, I guess you're, I don't know if you're following the Lou Elizondo book that they're releasing imminent and. Oh, well, you think that. Of- you yeah. sent that um, story to me, yeah. But I've yeah. I've seen him in interviews before, so right, right. So yeah, he's a really member. Curious. He's actually a member of the intelligence community. So he's you know he's not really a whistleblower, but whatever. Mm-hmm. So the point being is that his and I'm I'm getting his book, which is out. It's either today or tomorrow. I think it's today. He's being released on Amazon, and um, he's doing interviews with with certain people. I don't think he'll talk to me. That'd be nice, but I don't know. Talk to um, you. <laughs> but the thing is that I'm saying is that they're making a push right now for disclosure of a kind, and mm-hmm. they're trying to control the narrative as always. Mm-hmm. So this is also a very heightened time for if you were to do any of these kind of projects, because that is the way, you know, that's what the way Hollywood will be looking right this mm-hmm. minute. You can imagine Mm-hmm. They're going to start bringing out more and more movies along these lines because when you, you you know they want disclosure, they're going to try to you know wake up young minds and into this possibility and 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 so on and so forth. So anyway, just um, just throwing things out for you because you're so talented in this way and you could run with any of these ideas. I I, I love the um I think the Antarctica one is kind of great. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, it uh, sounds like you're already going down that road. So that's a good one, too. Uh, yeah. But just saying that that's where we're at. And that aside from just aliens, there are, you know, whole new ways of looking at the world that we're going to ha- that people are going to have to incorporate. Right. Mm-hmm. So I don't I'm not I know <laughs> I'm sort of different this way, but. I'm not looking at the future going, oh, doom and gloom, and I'm so worried. I don't give a shit about any of that. (laughs) I've always lived on the edge in my life anyway. So I don't think it's so unusual to for the whole world to be on edge because we don't know which way this thing is going to turn. I know there are people that like to say white hats are in control, but, uh, but 
I just listened to 107. Like he did a broadcast recently with Nino and he basically said, no, it's a very small part of the military that the white hats have control of. So with that in mind, uh, you know, I think the, it's the gamut is completely open as to where things are going to head and even day to day. Right. Right. So um, yeah. So just, any thoughts you want to contribute to uh, how you're looking at the future yourself? Yeah, because I think that um, I really think that we as a people should not really should. Re I mean, I should realize that the media has been gaslighting us <laughs> and like, since forever i mean we all know about um mockingbird media right and all yes. your viewers are very very knowledgeable about pretty much everything that's going on so right. so um but there is but there's a there are other people out there that need to that you know i hope hopefully they'll realize that you know we are being gaslit but i think that the more we put out there and the more we, the more we hear from you, Carrie, the better <laughs> the world will be because because we need to hear the truth. We need to know what the truth is, and the truth should get out there, whether it's from you and your whistleblowers, or if it's something being soft disclosed from Hollywood. Not that I totally trust anything they say, but there is some soft disclosure. There is. There's disclosure from the super soldiers, which I think are really important because they're telling us a lot of what's going on, right? And whatever I can do, you know, with through my work and my podcast and talking to people and trying to augment those voices, I think it's really important. I think it's I think there's like there are people who have dug their heels into like the mainstream narrative and maybe they'll never come around. And then there's people like us, but then there's like these people in the middle. And I think we could get to those people. And I think we could sure. sort of have a tipping point. And I think, I think that's, you know, I'm hopeful that that's, you know, what could happen. But I also think, you know, I used to think that we, the people free the people, right? Yes. But, yeah. okay. It, but I think it's more I, the person frees the person because it has to start with me. It's like, sure. I have to have that mindset. I need to think about like what I'm putting in my body, like the toxins that I'm I'm not going to let in anymore, the people, the the food, the water, the air, and really just take care of myself, not that I'm not doing service to others which I am, but you know, it's also Well, a, yeah, if you are healthy and you you're serving others through yourself that way. Because you can't yeah. help others if you're if you're helpless, actually. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So um, so it, it kind of goes around and comes around. But in terms of what I think in in you know talking to you that I would emphasize again is is that artists like the idea here is that a lot of there are artists and I know that there's this whole you know, the trans thing, a lot of the creativity in the arts is coming out in very kind of distorted ways right now, but it doesn't mm -hmm. need to be doing that. It needs to actually be inspiring and coming back to the, the hero or, or, you know, whether it's a male or female hero, in mm -hmm. other words, that the hero's story that we need heroes at this time to save humanity. So that theme I think is more important than ever and it's our artists that inspire, I think, inspire people. Um, so all the arts, you know, whether it be dance or, or, or you know, art, you know, pictures or theater or, or whatever, you know, movies, everything. The arts are a great place to be creative about creating the future and even what you want to see now. So, um I am the very, I, you know, I actually studied to be a director, you know, I studied acting, I, I still am very interested in making movies. And I think that that's going to be where I go in the future, 
Like that mm-hmm. seems to me that, you know, cause I've done this whole thing, this whistleblower thing forever. Right. And it's not that, and that people, you know, have been putting a lot of energy into a, a damning future, a negative future. And, and um, one of the things I rub, rub up, up against is people that don't even want to admit that the white hats exist, let alone that they're doing something positive for humanity. <laughs> You know, even friends of mine have say this to me. I mean, people that should know better don't know better. So this is where I think, you know, someone like you can really inspire others at this really crucial time to see another future. And I think that once we, you know, that there's a lot of energy being funneled down into a negative thing. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what the Illuminati always do. They try to capture your eyeballs, capture your mind, and then tell you where to look and how to look. And they want to lower your frequency so they, see, they show you a negative future. So I think that we, our artists, you know, and that, that's a word to all the artists out there, to imagine, you know, the positive future and what we, what we can take from the future and, and bring forward and you know, whether it's something like iRobot, right, mm-hmm. where you actually have not it's still like a semi, I think it's fun. Maybe it's nonsensical in a way, but, you know, with Will Smith that you have a robot that actually rebels and then tries to free all the other robots. Um, thought, but OK, you know. That's mm-hmm. what the theme of the movie is. So, you know, I'm just saying that this is is this is what we have. And, and, you know, of course we have Terminator, which is, see, I love stories and movies that, and novels that are about heroes, uh, especially female heroes as it happens, you know, because I think women are saving the world anyway. Well, that's, that's why I wrote, honestly, that's why I wrote the big shebang because I found out I put all these stories that were, you know, squelched these women who were, you know, submarined and like basically erased from like the story of the narrative of the planet. So right. they were all heroes. And, you know, even like the Mary Magdalene story was hijacked and, you know, the God, the mother story. And, and there was Thecla who um, was, went around with St. Paul, but she, they tried to burn her at the stake and the, flames went this way and a female lioness saved her instead of eating her and fought off a male lion. And I mean, there were all these great stories about these female heroes and I'm definitely obsessed with the hero's journey, the whole Joseph Campbell thing. Yeah. And, um, but I also think this is maybe a little more delicate of a subject, but you see, as far as I'm concerned, and I actually did a presentation a long time ago about this, but mm-hmm. we are all, um, we're all magicians. Okay. So what's a magician? A, mis- a magician is someone who creates reality. We are mm-hmm. all creators. And so understanding that and mm-hmm. that you can do it in a positive way or you can do it in a negative way. And mm-hmm. there's, um, there's sort of a, a right wing swing right now um, mm-hmm. against that the idea of things like magic and right. uh, so understanding you know this is again calling a lot of people or back in centuries right women that would imagine or speak out you know a woman who speaks was called a witch right and they burned out the stake for no mostly. just for talking which yeah. is what I do all the time <laughs> you know it's <laughs> It's kind of, you know, and it does hark back to that time. In other words, we are entering a time when it's very important how you you take back some of these ideas and understand they don't belong to the dark. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. and being a creator is one of them and certainly a female creator. So Mm -hmm. I I think, you know, I think it's exciting. I I um I have had some interesting visualizations of the future, you know, Mm -hmm. and um, so I, I don't know if you have, have you or. Yeah, I totally have. I mean, even even like in uh, this, the big shebang, the book I wrote like four years ago, I had like, you know, you could, which way will humanity go? Will we, you know, be 
be AI bots or will we have I, like a brave new beautiful world where you know we have all this technology and I saw saw like a Atlant new Atlantis that was like you know people flying and you know yes. just like the crystalline cities and exactly not walking light people so light that their feet don't even touch the ground and you know coming from the heart everything was heart based which is very something cool. that, you know, my, yeah. yeah so i definitely like what i try to do and what i'm working on now and it's funny because what you're saying is exactly what i was thinking and doing because i feel the more we put since we are creators we are co-creators. The more we put out there, that's of uh, the more we could visualize a world where humanity is part of achieves their ultimate. You know, is like the the Christic, you know, crystalline human who has like achieved their divine blueprint and you know has ascended and become who we were meant to be from the very very beginning if we uh, like draw ourselves that if we mm -hmm. literally draw that we could draw that energy in and that's yes. kind of i think that's, that's right. why i'm nervous because i draw the energy sure yeah. and then you, then you express it yeah so yeah so so this is i think the this is the brave new world that we're entering and i think that we shouldn't uh, I think humanity should not sell itself short at this time. I think that we have, in some ways, we have an opportunity is that when you sort of clean the slate, which is a lot of what's going to be going on right now, right? So right. You're gonna out, as you out the truth and, and, and stuff, then it throws light, it exposes everything to the light. Then mm -hmm. it, in a certain, there's a cleansing you know, when you, when you have truth and a, mm -hmm. and a seeing through, right. So then you, what do you see through too? So mm -hmm. again, I think it's really important right now at this very interesting verge, rather than focus on, oh, uh, the crash of the stock market or the crash of this or, or the war that they're going to try to, you know, I just had a precog during the other night. I mean, yeah, they're going to do these things, okay? And in some ways, we can't stop them. Mm -hmm. But those of us who are envisioning the future, it's like if the wave of the future was to come and engulf the present, then it could almost push it aside. And, and so the destruction of the present can be, you know, can actually be cast aside eventually and we will replace it with something amazing. And um, one of my visions that I had was, it was very interesting. I never imagined to have a dream like this, but what it was, was sort of these rolling hills of earth, of, of, of soil. And the soil was, was like, fresh and clean. And so I saw it going on for miles, these rolling hills of, of clean soil. So I'm just thinking that this was kind of a new earth kind of thing, but at the same time, you know, it could happen here. In other words, right. this could be the new earth. In other mm -hmm. words, that we're remaking it, that it can remake itself right now. And so um, it's not just to focus on destruction, you know, that's not going to, that's not any way to go, you know, like you can't focus on no, no goes nowhere, <laughs> you know, no is a stop. Yeah, and, and so I agree. We have to build the new. And so I think that, you know, when I'm talking to somebody like you, I get very inspired because I can see that you can. You can think of it in your mind, then you can actually you can actually materialize it so that people, other people can see it, your your visions. And I think that's such a, a wonderful gift, right? So um I just hope that as an artist you will consider that. <laughs> you know what? I mean, it's really funny because um I mean that's definitely where my head is and what I've been like working on. Okay, cool. And um yeah, and I love what you're saying. And I always say that we are the new earth birthers. 
right? Yeah. And it comes from the women too, you know, right. we're, we're birthing the new earth, right? That's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, then, it's all kind of come from within us that, yeah. you know, if you want to really know, I mean, your future is coming from within you, those mm-hmm. watching. And uh, so, so with that, that gives you a special power in the future that you perhaps have not had in the past. Right. So, um, so with that in mind, it could, it, we can empower each other to, to do, to manifest in, mm-hmm. in every way and to be start thinking along those lines, um, rather than going down a drain, you know, like how water goes around down a drain and then it's gone. That's not really productive. It's not really creative. It doesn't really inspire anybody. I don't think. So I'm not inspired by destruction, really, you know. No, me neither. And like, right? I mean, what is humanity? We are the great creator race. Right. That's what, that's and, what well, we're people. made, that's, if we're made in any kind of image, it's the image of the creator. So I think holding that high and in our minds and, and looking towards the future is a really you know, sort of great way to approach things. So uh, let's see, is there anything I'm going to look in the chat because, you know, we're talking away here and maybe there are some people that if anyone wants to ask Marissa a question, uh, she's obviously um, got these wonderful books and I, um, I can bring her website up again if people are interested, but uh, yeah, whatever you want to ask her, she here's your chance. Uh, she, like I said, she is around and she's, uh, she's also, um, she's doing these weekly broadcasts with uh, Laura Eisenhower. So she's, she's exploring, uh, you know, other people that are testifying as to where they're coming from and their, their stories, but any any thoughts so anyone put put a question mark if you have a question mark for a question for her and then i will grab it from the chat okay so um it's uh i think we're really we're really in an interesting juncture you know um so anything you want to say well yeah i mean i just to hear, I mean, I have to tell you how inspired I am by you. So I'm pretty <laughs> <fun. Everything. laughs> I just, I can't, I think I'm inspired by you. I'm inspired by your ability to draw just everything, <laughs> you know, it's, and just really, it's just, <laughs> it's entrancing, I think. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, just, I think it's really important for, for us to not let, anybody control our narrative whether and i think it's we need to take back the storyline and we need to create our own world we need the vision to manifest our beautiful futures because we can not let somebody tell us what it's going to be who don't wish us well i mean we humanity is an incredible credible we are incredible and we yeah. have so power more power than we ever even dreamed of and i think we can do amazing amazing things if we allow our imagination to do it right um and i think that uh you know it's it is a choice it's a personal choice what you're going to focus on right now you know there are a lot of people out there they're saying you know now, at least Juan says it's temporary. You know, he kind of emphasizes that this kind of like downturn in the market, you know, whether we do or don't have a, an election. But I think in the end of the day, you know, you know how you want it to be. And so once you've decided where you're at in the scenario, you know what I mean? Then what more is there to talk about? <laughs> I mean, you know, they're getting on with it, of course, now after all these years. And and some of it is just simply letting us know what they've actually been doing since they did everything in secret. Mm -hmm. So that's great. But at the same time, I think that the, that humanity should be active Mm -hmm. again as creators. And so instead of swallowing, you know, I know people spend hours and hours 
<clears throat> watching videos with people like me or with like you and Laura. And yet at the same time, they're just watching. And I think that we can inspire people. I hope that we can. But at the same time, I think that if, if you look within yourself and say, what can I bring to the future of mm -hmm. humanity at this time? And um, sure, you can prep, you know, you, you know, bury yourself under under gold and silver. And, you know, can you imagine? I mean, just piles of gold and silver and piles of, of canned goods and, you know, all this nonsense. But, you know, the reality is that's not going to be the future. <laughs> Right, right. That's that's a very temporary sort of hurdle that we have to get through. In my view, I don't see a dark future for us. I, I really don't. Um, I think there are things that are going to happen that are, again, going to kind of be like clearing the decks, you mm -hmm. know, like when you take a broom and you have, you have a lot of debris and then you sweep it away. Mm -hmm. I think that's what's going to happen, you know, and then once it's swept away, then you have an opening. And so I what think do you mean by we're that? coming to the opening. So what do you mean like a debris that's being swept away? Like, Well, because of what's happening and the exposure that's happening to the dark side, right? A lot mm -hmm. of these things are falling literally at our feet. So you mm -hmm. could think of these sort of the fall of the cabal, you know, that's that series. It's right. a fall. Okay. So that means they falls to the ground. It mm -hmm. comes down to earth. It's earthed. OK, mm -hmm. so it's what what's really going to happen now more and more, especially as the White Hats, you know, gain control, mm -hmm. assuming they do, that you're going to have a sweeping away of the past mm -hmm. and then a, then a rebirth is, is required. So mm -hmm. I'm just saying we need to focus on the rebirth, <laughs> you know, know, and I think as we reimagine, as I said, our world. I mean, you know, I happen to know that even 107 has huge fantasies about, you know, outer space and, and doing sci-fi things, you know, he's yeah. like a huge, an avid sci-fi reader and all that kind of thing. In other words, all these inventors that have been held back understand that at least the creatives, the incredible creatives, and that's on the male and the female side, have been held back. And so right now, some of those people are coming forward and, you know, they're dressing wild and they're, you know, fascinated by the destruction and all right. the cars slow down, right? Mm -hmm. So rather than doing that, <laughs> right. can I encourage people not to slow down and stare mm -hmm. that, you know, not to get um, really mystified and magnified to the destruction, but rather realize that you're the creator. We are each the creators of our own future. And we need to do that. We need to create the new on top of the old. And mm -hmm. the, as the old is, is swept away, because mm -hmm. it will be. Mm -hmm. And there's even, um, you know, I have a friend, Michael Schratt, he's going to be on a show with me tomorrow. And he's a wonderful aerospace historian. And also he tracks all the, the crash retrievals throughout history. And he, he actually has somebody who draws them, right? Which is another thing you're probably really good yeah, yeah. at. But anyway, so, you know, the, these people are drawing. So what he's doing is he's, he's going into the past and he's salvaging the wonderful goodness that that is there, all of the investigations that have been mm -hmm. done in the past, all the, you know, unearthing the things that I've unearthed um, through my whistleblowers. And, and yeah. Yeah. in other words, we, with this destruction, we don't want, you don't want to throw everything out, right? So you want to make sure that you can salvage and bring forward the real truth. And so when I was talking about Lou Elizondo's book, mm -hmm. it's kind of like David Grush at the UAP hearing. And he was trying to talk like, and, you know, I don't fault him because he's, he's working for an intelligence agency and I'm sure he, they keep him on a short, short leash or he was, I think it doesn't work for them anymore. I don't know. But mm -hmm. The thing is that he's basically acting as though disclosure, you know, and the crash retrievals were just happening right now. And the Tic Tacs are all they saw in the sky and all this stupid shit. So right. trying to limit your understanding and your memories 
mm-hmm. of, of the wonderful past, the things that are wonderful in our past, the, the things that are disclosing real truth. And so I think that's another thing you can do. You can unearth, like you're saying, talking about writing about um, Atlantis. And that, that's what we're doing. We're trying to rediscover who we really are, what has been buried, what has been forced to be silent, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's time mm-hmm. to come to the surface and tell the truth and I be agree. revealed, right? Mm-hmm. So we're, we're, we're going to be like, if you think of these generations right now, once we're over this destruction part, mm-hmm. we're going to be the great revealers. We're going to reveal in ways that never were even dreamed of that we could bring back and tell the truth, like of Tataria. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. and... And all kinds of amazing things. So, you know, the earth is full of, of, of ruins that were full of, of knowledge and, and, and the history of humanity and so on and so forth. So let's not lose sight of that either. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's and don't you think it's so interesting too? like in 1947, right, when Roswell happened and then, you know, like 1945 1947 roswell and then like nag hammity like all those scrolls were discovered and oh, then we nag hammadi yes the nag Hamadi. Hamadi. yeah you say nag hammity i say nag hammity oh, okay <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i don't know <laughs> whatever you know, yeah. I mean? but it's like all that incredible knowledge yes was, was unearthed you know along with the technology the crash re- from roswell that you know, gave birth to, I mean, this is kind of crazy, you know, that um, those Pyrex, like the the technology for the Pyrex, you know, those Corningware bowls. Right. Like that's, that came out of Roswell. There's lots uh, that Colonel Corso was bringing okay. into the commercial sector A eventually. Yeah. yeah. In A fact, lot computers the chips you name it there i mean there's so much even even a lot of the weaponry they they use now came from there so yeah so yeah. much came out of roswell but this and, is our creativity too yeah uh, yeah right yeah so you got you get a remnant from the past and then you you basically bring it into fruition in mm-hmm. maybe a different way than it was originally intended even you know, so there's that. Um, so, which is not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> it's not a bad thing because you know what? The more, like, there's been so many things that have been held back from us, as you know, as your viewers know, as we all know, that's really <laughs> the truth. But you know, as what, if we're able to take those things, like that, the the technology, and transmute it and make it useful to us, I mean. Right. And, and so I'm just saying that, you know, it's, it's going to happen in the imagination of, in our imaginations. All right. So if you can imagine the positive side of the, of the future that does involve even things that, that you think right now are, you know, that scare you like AI, let's say, or something like that. Um, in other words, there, there could be a symbiosis between us and AI eventually. We don't have to just always imagine the most detrimental, the most destructive view of, oh, this is going to ruin our lives, right? So they said the computer would ruin their lives. And then they said, you know, automobiles would ruin their lives and all these things. Right. But we are surviving and we are pretty, pretty darn fluid um, beings. You know, we not only we we can get ourselves, pick ourselves up off the ground and we can brush ourselves off and go into a, a brave new world. And I think that that's what we have ahead of us and so um it's just having you on makes me inspires me to to talk like this but i've been thinking about it a lot lately you know because i am not so consumed like as other people seem to be mm-hmm. by watching the destruction you know this yeah. is not you know um this is a very dark type of thing and uh 
and questionable as well when 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 decisions like that are also taken out of our hands. I think that we the one thing that I would say about the plan or any other plan that the Illuminati have in, in store for us or the White Hats or whoever it is, is that we decide, not them. And this is going to be paramount that we criticize and that we are openly analyzing what are they really saying and what do they want versus what do we want? You know, cause humanity, the people I talk to want to be free. Mm-hmm. Everyone, every, I mean, I travel the whole world and I can tell you and I've everywhere is beautiful people all over the place, you know? So mm-hmm. what do the children want? That children want to be free. They want to express themselves and to be free. So I think that's a beautiful thing. I agree. And I think the more playful that we are as adults, you know, and the more expressive we are, the more we were able to express ourselves and freely and, and able to say what we really think the better we are. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so child is father to the man comes to mind. Yeah. So there's a reason for that saying, you know, yeah. So we can learn from children and um, from their vision and the way they look at the future, which is not, you know, that they're not actually naturally, they're not doom and gloomers. No, they're not. (laughs) You know, they just greet everything with curiosity and openness. I think if we do that as adults, like be open and have curiosity and, let ourselves create and imagine like we did as children, I think. Right. And imagine a better future for ourselves and everybody else. I think the better this world will be. I, I think it's really so. about the imagination. Yes, absolutely. Well, so anyway, I, I guess I'm just looking one more time to see if there's any questions that hit the chat. Otherwise, um, you know, I, I, I'll let you go unless you have anything else you want to talk about, because I certainly want, you know, this to be your platform as well to, to, you know, convey whatever you'd like to, you know, people that are watching you and tell them what's going on. Well, I just, um, I, I just honestly, you know, have been watching you for so long, Carrie, and it's been my dream to be on your show. So <laughs> I feel okay. One thing that, you know, the bucket list here. Thank you very oh. much. <laughs> and um, I just really think the world of you and thank you. And um, I'd love to have you back on. And I just put your, ch- I put some links in the chat. Thanks. Okay. So hopefully people can see them there. And um, they were all. <coughs> Sorry, they will also be on your on your uh, you know page when we we publish this, and this show will go on to Rumble as well. Okay, and then I'll repost it too. So, okay, great. So I'm not going to try to talk too much more at this moment, um, but I want to thank you so much for being here and for being so inspiring, such a wonderful artist, and. Um, yeah, let's let's move into the future in a whole different way. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on, Carrie. I think okay, the world. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>